Dear viewers, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the operation of a starter motor. Well, when you look at uh, the construction, we have these components. We have the armature with the overrunning clutch. We have the main field. So the armature will be inserted in here. And it has to be supplied with electricity. That electrical energy is supplied by this carbon brush. So brush will be inserted. And we have the back cover. So this is the back cover. And when it comes to the front end, we have the starter motor housing. So this will be inserted in here in such a manner. And then in order to actuate engagement and disengagement of this, we have a solenoid and then we have a fork that will be inserted in here to activate engagement and disengagement of the pinion. So these are the components. So when electricity is provided, this will become an electric motor. This becomes a solenoid that will engage and disengage this to the flywheel. And when the engine is started, it will disengage this from the flywheel. So this is basically some of the components of the starter motor. Here you can see a cutout view of a conventional starter motor where all parts are made visible. So we will see how it operates. Well, let's see how the starter motor does the cranking of the engine. In order to perform that, the starter motor has to produce rotational force by receiving produced power, giving electric from the battery. So for that, we have a, a motor unit here, a motor unit that will convert the electrical energy to mechanical energy and then engage this pinion to the flywheel so that it can start rotating. And then we have also another mechanism that will engage and disengage this pinion to the flywheel. So overall, let's see how it operates. Well, starter motors, they operate by the principle that says magnetic poles that are similar in polarity will repel each other and unlike poles attract each other. Nearly almost motors, electrical motors operate on that basic principle. When you bring closer two magnets, if their polarity is the same, they will repel. If they, their polarity is different, they will attract each other. So that basic principle is used here. So we have a field winding here. These are the main field windings. We have these field windings. This is the main field winding. So for example here, we can see that we have four poles. If this is north pole, the so adjacent will be south, north, south. So we have a pole here. We have poles here. And then we have the armature winding. The armature winding, when it is provided by electricity from the brush, it will become another magnet. So what do we have? We have two magnets that are placed in the vicinity of one another. This, when it is provided with electricity, it will become a magnet. And this coil, also, when it is powered, it will become a magnet. So as we have said, when magnets are put together, either they will attract or they will repel. Now, the resultant effect will tend to rotate this armature. The armature winding is like this. This is the armature. It has electrical connection. We have winding here. So when current is supplied through the commutator, when voltage is supplied through the commutator, current will start flowing through this winding. That will magnetize the armature. So we have one magnet and field when it is magnetized, we have another magnet. This magnet is placed in here. So what will happen is the reaction between the two magnetic fields will rotate this armature. So the rotation of this armature will be transferred to the flywheel via this connection and when the pinion engages with the flywheel, that rotational force which is produced by the reaction between these magnetisms will crank the engine. So that is simply how the starter motor operates. Now in order to do that, we have to have electrical connection supplied to the winding. To do that, we have a solenoid switch. Solenoids, they are electrical switches that will do electrical switching plus mechanical work also. So here we have the electrical connection end. We have three terminals here. This terminal, this terminal, and this terminal. We have three terminals. One terminal is called terminal 50. 
that is where electrical connection from the battery is connected. Here, for example, I have a simple small solenoid. We have three terminals. Terminal 50, we have here. We have terminal C, and we have terminal 30. Terminal 30 is connected to the battery. It comes from battery positive. Terminal C is connected to this main winding. Terminal C will be connected to the main winding. And the body, when it is tightened, it is grounded. So these are the electrical connections. For example, on this starter motor, for example, you can see that similar thing on this starter motor. We have a solenoid switch. The solenoid has three terminals. Terminal 50 is here. Terminal C is connected to the winding, the main field winding by this connection. And we have terminal 30 that is connected to the battery. So how does it operate? When electric power is supplied to terminal 50, when the ignition key is turned to the start position, electric will be supplied to terminal 50. Now terminal 50 will actuate, will activate electrical windings in the solenoid switch. We have two windings in here, the holding winding and the pulling winding. So when the ignition key is put to crank, the two windings will have magnetism that will have same polarity so that they will assist each other. What will that do? When, when a coil in here is magnetized, the magnetism will act on this armature. This armature will be pushed, I mean, pulled into the winding. So what will happen by that force? When this winding is pulled inwards, when this is pulled in, look what is happening to the pinion. When this is pulled in, pinion is moving out. See? Pinion will go out to engage to the flywheel, and this armature will come in here and act on this contact. See that? There is a contact plate in here. This contact plate will be pushed, so it will connect terminal C and terminal 30. Now when terminal C and terminal 30 is shorted out, large electric current from the battery will directly come to the field winding and the brush. That way, the starter motor will start spinning. And one thing to remember is when this pinion is forced outward, what happens is there is a slight current flow from the pulling winding. The pulling winding is getting ground through the main winding and finally through the brush. What happens is this armature will slightly rotate. When it is slightly rotating and when the, this overrunning clutch and pinion assembly is pushed to the flywheel side, this will slightly rotate. The purpose of the starter motor is simply to give the engine initial cranking so that it can produce power and then start running by its own. So the initial cranking is basically done by converting electrical energy into mechanical energy. For that, we need an electrical motor that is powered by the battery. So the purpose of the starter motor is simply to convert that electrical energy stored in the battery to a mechanical energy that is used to crank the engine. So that, that is why we have a starter motor on almost all IC engines. But there are small engines that are started by rope start mechanism, and there are engines that are started by kick start mechanism. So whatever the mechanism, the purpose is to give initial rotation of the engine so that it can be cranked and start producing power of its own. What do I mean by that? This is the armature construction. You see the armature shaft has a spiral tease on it. This spiral tease is designed in such a way that it will allow the overrunning clutch. When the overrunning clutch is pushed out, it does not move a straight line, rather it is where it rotates and also moves out. Let me show you on this starter, let me show you on this armature, look for example, this armature, it has a spiral tease, so the overrunning clutch, when it is moving out, look, it is not only moving to the flywheel side, but also it is rotating, see, this rotation, together with the very slight current that is provided to the armature winding is the field winding, will allow engagement of the pinion to the flywheel tears. Even though there is some tease jamming in the, in the flywheel area, 
due to that slight rotation of the armature winding and uh, the slight rotation of the overrunning clutch and pinion assembly that will allow gear engagement. Once the flywheel is engaged, once the pinion has fully engaged in the flywheel, what will happen is the armature shaft, the armature will act on this contact plate. This contact plate, what it does is it will push to this side, it will contact terminal C and terminal 30. That will short terminal C and terminal 30. When terminal 30 and terminal C are connected, large amount of electrical current can flow through the main field winding and the armature winding. Now that large electric current will produce the required torque for cranking the vehicle. After the engine has been cranked and the engine is started, the driver releases the ignition key. What will happen then? When the ignition key is released, the magnetic polarity between the holding and the pulling winding will be opposite. Now when they are acting in opposite direction, there is a spring that is on this actuator. See solenoids? They have a spring. When magnetism is there, it will be pulled in. When the magnetism interrupts, it will be returned by the return spring. So there is a tough return spring. This is how it operates. Spring is missing on this model. When the magnetic polarity between the holding and the, the pulling winding becomes opposite, what will happen is the magnetism will not be sufficient enough to overcome the spring force. So the spring, it will return the solenoid assembly. So when the solenoid is returned, look what is happening to the pinion. When solenoid is returning, the pinion will move in opposite direction. It will disengage the flywheel. And if there is a delay on the driver releasing the ignition key, once the engine is started, there is a possibility of the engine driving the starter motor. Now if the engine is driving the starter motor due to the extremely large gear ratio, that will cause damage to the starter motor assembly. That is prevented by the overrunning clutch. The overrunning clutch, what it does is, when the engine starts driving the pinion at high speed, that pinion, that pinion rotation will not be transferred to the armature side. So by disengaging that, the overrunning clutch by one-way transmitting, transmitting power in one direction only, and preventing power transmission if it comes from the flywheel side will save the life of the starter motor. So overrunning clutch assembly. Look. On one side it is transmitting power. On one side it is transmitting power. On one side it is running free. So when the engine is being cranked like this, for example, when the engine is cranking like this, it is transmitting power. But when the crank is from the flywheel side, it is running free. Now here we have a starter motor installed on this four cylinder diesel engine. Now look what will happen in, happening what is happening here when the ignition key is put to crank. See it comes out, cranks the engine and then go back to where it was when the ignition key is released. Let's do it again. So this is how the starting system operates. So this is how the starting system operates. Thank you for joining and thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos of this kind. And don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video.